What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. As many of you guys will know, I've escaped two bowl aquariums before. The first one I smashed because my drill fell against it. And the second one I had for about six months, it ran its course. I didn't keep up on the trimming of the plants and it just completely outgrew the bowl. So we started again. In today's video, we're going to be escaping this bowl that you can see behind me. Right next to it is a dirted planted tank. It's got a filter. But in the bowl, I want to do no filter with dirt, no CO2, no heater, no water. No, there will be water. <laughs> it's an ongoing joke. But yeah, one of the first things we need to do is get a light on it because you can't sit there filming this in the darkness, can we? So I've got a few options here ranging from actually specifically designed for plants. These two are. This is Aquil Light thing smart led smart leddy this is the flexi mini which is similar i think to the onf flat one it's just a much older sort of version if you like not part of the same company or anything but you know really good light for growing plants to be fair it's what we've got on this one here and on that tank there and you can see the plants are growing great so these two lights are designed for planted tanks which means that they have full spectrum lighting this is just a cheap little nano fish tank light with just white leds and this is a clip-on desk lamp so what do you think i'm going to choose to build my planted bowl with that's right, the clip-on desk lamp. Anyone can get hold of just simple clip-on desk lamps. So that's what we're gonna to use to show you guys what you can do without any special lighting, special requirements. Any light can grow a plant at the end of the day. It's just that some lights look better for us than others. So there we have it, already looking good next to the planted tank we've got next to it. Different colour rendition, but you know, still looks really good. I'll leave a link to this bowl and a light similar to this one in the description, guys. I don't think they actually make these anymore. I got it like a year and a half ago, so I haven't been able to find them on Amazon anyway. Like I said, any desk lamp will work. This one's got a 6,500 Kelvin bulb, which gives us that sort of more whitey blue light rather than the yellow light which i think looks much better with green plant so the next job we need to do is get something that's going to provide nutrition to our plants and as i said i want this to be a dirty tank in the same way that this is a dirty tank underneath that sand is a layer of dirt i've dug up from a garden so let's just go out and get some more dirt so i found a good little spot what we want to do is dig off all of the topsoil because we don't want to get topsoil in there and underneath the topsoil is this nice proper clay stuff you know like that there that's what we want now you don't need a lot of this stuff at all like literally that there maybe a little bit more than that actually it's only a small bowl remember and if you get too much in there you'll just put way too many excess nutrients into the water column and you'll get algae that's literally all we need and even that's probably too much now I'll take this back into the house because we need to dry it out so you might be thinking, why have we got a baking tray? Well, the reason is because you need to put the soil onto the baking tray because we need to bake it. Makes sense, right? But first of all, we need to remove as much of the organic matter as we can before we bake it. Just take out some of these bits of straw and that. And then after it's dried, we can actually break it up and put it for a sieve. And then we'll be able to remove most of the roots and all the other organic matter and be left with just the soil. Okay, I just want to add guys a really important health and safety notice. Do not do this when your wife is at home because she will kill you. So we'll just leave that there for a while to cool down and then once it has, we can break it all up and put it for a sieve. Right, so what we want to do next guys, pour the soil into a bowl like that and then just use something, I'm just using this big pebble, just to break it all up make it into a fine powder now obviously guys this would all be a lot easier with a pestle and mortar i don't have either of those things but what i do have is a rock and a bowl and you know me i'm always one to make use of the things you've got and just get on with the job and then what we need to do is just pour the soil through the sieve again don't tell your wife about this and just give it a gentle tap and it should all fall through there might be a few bits left over you can regrind those up and just put it back through again so we've now got our powder what we need to do is add some water to it so the reason that we want to add water to the dirt powder is just to make sure that we're not going to get any air bubbles trapped underneath the sand when we cap it in. This could potentially cause problems down the road because if any of the gas leached into the water column, it could actually kill any of the livestock that we're going to put in there at a later date. So we now have our soil, guys. I put it in this little pot. Before we put that in our bowl, though, we want to add our decorative sand to the foreground first. So I've got some in this bowl that I've just washed out. It's got a little bit of black sand in it as well, which I prefer it didn't, but you're not really gonna see it anyway by the time I've you know, planted everything, it's all grown in. So we wanna get that in first at the front so that it covers up any of the brownness from the soil. Then we can bank the soil behind it, 
and then we can cover that up over the top again with an inch of sand. So what we want to do now is place the sand in as if we're making like a donut with a hole in the middle. This is to create an area where we can actually put the soil into, which then means you won't be able to see it at all looking in from the outside. After this, you can sprinkle your soil into the middle and then after that we can cover it up with some more sand. Now you might be tempted into thinking, oh, I'm just going to put a load more soil in because I'll get better growth for my plants. Do not do that. You won't get better growth from your plants. All that will happen is algae will cover the tank, cover the plants, you'll lower the light, there won't be no nutrition going in, there'll be no lighting coming in, there'll be nothing going on, and your tank will look absolutely awful. So don't do that. Just a little bit is enough, trust me. So now we've got our soil right at the bottom of the bowl, we can now top it up with the sand that we've cleaned off here. And it's just simply a case of plonking it on top and just start at the edges and work your way in. Basically, you want the soil fully capped down and you don't want to have any accidents of it spilling out at all into the water column. So now it's important at this stage that you're happy with how you've done your base layer. I'm, I'm really happy with mine. I've got the right shape I wanted. I want it to just slope in gently at the front and then raised at the back slightly. It just gives a better sense of depth. It means you can put the background plants at the back easier. They come taller quicker. But once you fill it up with water, there's no going back. You don't want to start disturbing the sand at that point because you'll puncture a hole into the area where you put the soil. And that just means start again, basically. So for hardscape guys, all I want to go for is just these three simple pebbles. Now I've gone for something crazy simple because I know that you guys can just give it a go yourselves and I'm, I'm well up for just making videos that everyone else can do. That's my style in it guys. Accessible videos that you can do and scapes that you can enjoy as well. So yeah, nice and simple. I kind of want them in this sort of arrangement like that. I think that looks quite good, but obviously a bit more angled. Can't do that holding the camera, but yeah, let's get them in the tank anyway. When you're arranging your stones, guys, make sure you take your time with it. There's no need to rush it at all. It can be a process that could take hours. Luckily for me, I've had a lot of practice nowadays, so I can usually see quite quickly how it should sit, what's wrong, how to adjust. But if you're not 100% happy of how it is, don't continue on to the next step. Just keep playing with it until you get it right. Well, I really like that, guys. I mean, let's face it, it's not gonna win any aquascaping awards, is it? But it's simple, it's cute. You know, I'm gonna be able to maintain that really well as well. It's fully open, I can get my hands right in and out. The last two bowls I've done have been quite complicated, but this is very simple and I like it. Right, anyway, I've got some plants in these pots. They've been in there for about a week now, so we need to get on with planting them. They're from a previous scape. So we've got dwarf hair grass. We've got some glossy stigma, like we've got the front of these. I just wanted, they were just, they're in really good condition. They've converted to their submerged state, and I didn't want to waste them, so I've kept them. I'll lay them out, and let's get them in a tank. Right, so there's all the plants. Oh. <laughs> as if by magic. All of them are from Tropica, by the way, guys, and I think it's a testament to the quality of the plants that they've been sat in a little tub with no light for like well over a week and they're just still doing really well. So we've got Glossostigma and we've got Dwarf Hairgrass there. I'm gonna get these in into the tank. They're not gonna be right in the foreground because I'm gonna be using a plant that I've never used before for the foreground. So first of all, let's get these in. Now to do this, guys, you will need a pair of aquascaping tweezers. I'm not sure if it's even gonna be possible to do this with your fingers but you can buy them in most shops and they're not expensive. When planting, make sure that you don't push it in too deep. This is why we added an inch of sand on top of the soil to make sure that we can get a good anchor on the plants because otherwise, when we go to flood the bowl at the end, everything will just lift up. I've had that done to me before. It's not fun and you don't want it to happen. Saying that, you also don't want to push the plants right down to the bottom of the bowl either. Somewhere in the middle is just perfect. Right, so there's our first plants in and I will forgive you for thinking, MD, that looks rubbish. <laughs> of course, I think the dwarf hair grass is too long, but the best way to trim that would be once the water has come in, you just get a better look. If I cut it now, it'll be all squared off and looking rubbish. So we'll probably trim that all back once it's flooded. But that's all of the plants that I'd already had prepared. The rest of the plant, it needs to be in the background. So all of our tall stem plants are at the back. And I've actually got some untricularia UG. I've got some UG from Tropica, which is that really fine leafed stuff. You know, it's supposed to be an advanced category plant. I'm going to try and grow it with a desk lamp, no CO2 and some dirt under the sand. <laughs> So 
So I think some people can have a bit of trouble with planting this UG. What I found was by bringing the water level almost right up to the surface of the sand, it created a kind of suction pulley effect, if you like. And after I pushed the UG into the sand, it sort of locked it in place. So that's all the short plants planted. Now for long stems and taller plants, I like to flood the bowl to do that, or, or the tank usually as well. I just find it looks so much better and you can see what height you're at with your stems, if they're all matching or not matching, or however you want them to be, you can see how they're gonna be as soon as you plant them, rather than having them flopped over, filling the tank up with water, and then realizing that, oh, it's all the wrong height, some areas aren't covered, and all that sort of thing. So I like to just fill it up, get the stems in, and you can adjust as you go along then, and get it looking perfect from the word go. Go. So I always like to start tanks with some mature water from my discus tank. This is my best tank and any plants I put in here grow amazingly well. I just think it's really good to start a tank with some mature water. Some people say it doesn't help, others say it does. I always believe it does, so I go for it. If you haven't got a tank with mature water, then don't worry about it. It just means that the cycling process might take a little bit longer for your tank, but doesn't mean you can't give it a go. A good tip as well when you're filling up your tank, bowl or anything really, is to lay down some paper towel and pour on top of that. I've also, as you can see here, got a jug that I've drilled some holes in the bottom for and just to make the water come out a little bit slower. The last thing we want now is to disturb everything and ruin all our hard work. Right guys, hopefully you can see what we've got there. Sorry about all the reflections on the lights. I should probably go and turn them all off, shouldn't I? No, 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 I'll wait till the end to do all that so it looks proper. Right, see what I was saying before about the grass? Now, I like the longer bits in the middle. I think they look quite good and authentic. Maybe that one's a little bit too high. I want to bring the sides in each side as well. So we've got like a V taper, if you like. And then we can start putting our background plants in right behind those big rocks there. But overall at the moment, I think that's looking really nice. Hopefully you do too. And you can see that the bowl gives it a sort of magnified effect as well because those stones look so much bigger now than when they're in there. What I really like about it though is how different it is from you know the tank that's right next to it, which is good because that's what I wanted to see. Different. I like things being different. You don't want stuff matching all the time, do you? So yeah, now's a good time to get that trimming done of that grass and then we'll be able to scoop it out and then we can put in our stem plants at the back. So that's everything looking really good so far and you can see that all the foreground plants are complete but we've still obviously got that big gap in the background and that's where we're going to be putting all of our stem plants in this area i want to have a good injection of red stem plants so i'm going to use some rotala hra and then alongside that the real vibrant green of the limnophila so this right here is one of my spare storage tanks that I just use for growing plants and storing them in. Right now I'm just selecting and taking out the plants that we need for this setup. This tank's nothing special, it's just a cheap light, a bit of aquasol at the bottom and a little surface skimmer to keep some water movement. What's great about a tank like this is that it means that we can get new plants and then adapt them to their submerged state because they're actually grown out of water and this makes them convert quicker and look much better in your aquarium straight away. So let's put the limnophila in first. Now remember, it's gonna look a little bit funky for the first few days. This is because it's just been laying flat on top of the water in the plant vat, which means it's trying to grow a funny sort of angle and shape. But within a few days, it will straighten up, grow towards the light and be looking perfect. Up next is the Rotala Hra or Hurrah. I wanna keep this over to the left hand side and just create a real focal point of punchy color. Obviously we're working in such a small space, we have to create those cool little areas that draw the eyes in. Again, as with the Limnophila, it's all sort of trying to grow a funny angle so it will straighten up as the days go by. So I think that's coming along really well and looking really good so far. But I do feel that in this little area here, we do need more of those red stems. Not too much, but just filling out those gaps a bit. And I've run out of them in my plant vat, but I know just a place to get them from. Well, I was hoping to show you a really nice shot here of me trimming some HR from a discus tank. But as you can see, my largest discus, George, has decided he didn't want that to happen. <laughs> But anyway, you get the picture, look. The HR grows really well in this tank, as does every single plant in there. There's not a single bit of algae that I've seen at all. And these plants will fit perfectly in our new bowl. So it's now been 24 hours since the tank was set up. Let's take a closer look and see how it's getting on. So the first thing to know, I don't think the HR at the back is suiting the scape, to be honest. I mean, it looks really good from this angle, but as soon as you come to the side, it's just too big and bulky. Because of the magnification of the bowl, it kind of makes it look sort of out of scale, if you like. Look at all the delicate textures around it, even the limnophila there, look. Delicate features. The best way to get stem plants to like grow smaller 
is to trim them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go right in at the base down here and trim them. So you probably won't even see them, which will create that negative space. And then from that trimmed area, two shoots will come off and they tend to be more finer than the original one. So that's what we'll do. And when they grow back, they're going to look really, really nice. Okay, there we have it, all trimmed and I think looking really good. The scape does look like it flows a bit better now. I couldn't bring myself to throw away those trimmings so I replanted them back in the foreground. Little injection of red, I think it's really nice, it's gonna suit it well. We've got lots of red in the tank next to it as well, so the two together, they complement each other, but are different and I like that. And remember, yeah, we may have some negative space there as we can see in this whole section at the moment, but that's not gonna be negative space for long because these stems grow fast, especially the limnophila that'll need trimming back within a week guaranteed and again it'll grow back finer so that's all good i'm going to keep right on top of this one guys i'm going to trim it regularly just so it gets really compact and looks gorgeous so at the moment guys the bowl isn't ready for anything like shrimp or even any sort of nano fish some people don't like fishing bowls i can tell you right now i've done bowl aquariums before and i've seen rice fish behave so much better in a bowl aquarium than they ever did in like a cube or square or rectangle aquarium a conventional aquarium in a conventional aquarium they just tend to stay still and just gently bob about but in the circular bowl aquarium they just sort of keep swimming round and back and in and out and it's, it's almost like they can keep continuously swimming and they like that that's just what i observe that's what i believe anyway but as always with a new tank one of the first things i like to do is put in snails snails actually produce waste and they get the tank cycling quicker obviously to cycle a tank you need waste therefore this is our waste Waste, 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 waste. And luckily guys, I have quite a few tanks in which I can get some snails from. <laughs> if any of you are new to my channel, I've got videos on all of these different tanks, but this is the one I'm gonna use to get lots of snails from because there's tons in here of all different sizes. So it's currently being used as a storage tank because I'm gonna be planting this one very soon. Well, not planting, building. This is gonna be a massive angelfish tank. So that's why I've got tank stored in here this is my rainbow river tank the water just goes round and round and round and then i've got them in my freshwater reef tank here as well again they're all going in this big tank which has now got lighting more to come on this one in the next video guys but for now let's find us now so straight away look we can see some nice little ones here we don't want anything too big because at the end of the day it's only a small bowl isn't it So that's the snails in, but what I actually want to do when the tank is cycled is put in these crystal red shrimp you can see behind me. I absolutely love them and I really want to give them a tank of their own and maybe get a little bit of breeding action at some point as well. <laughs> 